Przyjechaliśmy do miasta Równe. To jest We have come to the city of Równe, some 400 kilometers from the capital Kiev. I'm here with Andrei. Good morning, Andrei. First tell me, I noticed that you speak perfect Polish. How did you learn Polish? I studied in uh, Warsaw with a master's in public administration and national security administration at a private school, the Warsaw Management University. I suspect that when you applied for the courses, you never imagined you will be actually carrying weapons. Never, frankly, I can say that half of Ukraine did not imagine that even on February 23rd, because I went to sleep. My brother called me at 6 in the morning. He received information from Lutsk that the town is uh, being bombed, the local airport. And still, when I was already awake, I did not think that was true. It was a true shock. Lutsk was bombed, but so was Ruvna. The missiles were fired. What was happening then? The first huge ballistic missile hit our airport, maybe not the airport itself, but a nearby radar of the air defense forces. And it was so powerful that it was heard in the whole city. For example, several days ago, when the television transmitting tower was hit, it was not heard that strong, but then the whole city heard the rocket. It was one ballistic missile but I heard two explosions. There was this glow which embraced the whole city. It was terrifying. What did you think then? I mean, only a day or two earlier, you drank your morning coffee, you walked across the city doing shopping, and then suddenly there are rockets flying over your head. At first it was a shock, but on the second day I enrolled in the territorial defense units, uh, not military, as a civilian, because... Uh, we are hunters, so we have weapons, we can help in defense. On the third day, it was decided we will supervise the defense during night and day of some of the so-called critical infrastructure objects, like heating plants, electric power plants, gas distribution plants. Then we added a special communication center, which is in the heart of the city. And with each day, there are more and more sites, like us uh, volunteers. Now we are more than a group of 1,000 in this region. What is it like here now? Do the sirens wail every day? Every day. Every day, usually during the night. I think it is also a psychological pressure on people that it happens during the night. People are unable to sleep. It's really hard, but we are tough. How is it getting used to the sirens, or maybe being aware that sirens spell danger and people hide in basements? How is it in practice? After two weeks of the war, people got used to it. Not everyone runs to find shelter. Uh, my friends, for example, hide in their building where two walls divide them from windows. The example of Mariupol showed that sometimes better chances to survive are when you are not down in a basement. However, the firefighters recommend we hide, and the majority does exactly that. Kiev is not far from here. We were in Lviv recently, but I can imagine that the closeness of the Russian army is felt here, and thus the mobilization here is very evident. Yes, uh, that is, uh, we in Kiev are the first target of their attack. Uh, they have decided that it is in the center of Ukraine. And if they capture Kiev, they will have the whole of Ukraine behind them. But of course, this is not the case. I was in shock when the rocket hit the vicinity of Lviv, the training ground in Yavorov, because uh, everyone thought that the west of the country uh, could be relatively secure. Now we know that there is no safe place in Ukraine. And I would like to say that our NATO partners should be more active because, you know, that from Yavorov there's some 50 kilometers to the Polish border. So where will the next missile hit? 
no one knows. What then do you think of NATO's activities from the perspective of a man who needs weapons, who needs support? I'm talking about you, the armed forces, the territorial defense, about all those who defend Ukraine. Now we have this help, but not enough. There's too much talk and too little deeds in this help. I do not think NATO should be sending planes here because they do not want a direct conflict with Russia, but we have our own pilots who could fly the planes. We need to get missiles, rockets. Slovakia was to send us rockets in exchange for receiving the Patriot systems, but I do not know, considering the political context, how many can we really receive. Uh, But a positive side is your national morale. You are not giving up. What is your perspective? Frankly, we will not give up. Even if the occupant enters, I will fight for my own country, for my homeland, till the very end. And it is not only I, all of us, we all thank you.